What's up? Today I'm going to be going over the seven criteria or values that you can use to see if you're in the right civil engineering firm. Or if you're a fresh graduate, how to choose your first firm. Honestly, this just applies to any career that you're trying to look at. It doesn't have to be engineering. Hi, I'm Matt Picardle and I'm a licensed civil engineer in Southern California with over six years of experience in the structural engineering field. I've had multiple civil engineering internships ranging from the government all the way to small private firms, small, mid to large size firms. And over the past six years, I've been with the same company and I've been using this criteria to help me find my way in my career path. So let's jump into it. So the seven criteria or job values that I use are company culture, work hours, engagement, prestige, impact, career growth, and pay. But first, why even learn this? Why even have this criteria set up? For me, I think it's important to have a goal or at least a somewhat direction on the career path or the life that you want to have. And that involves defining and finding out what you value in work and life. And then if your job is currently meeting those values, then you're much more likely to be happy in that. A lot of the times when people don't define these values and they just go wherever, they may end up resenting where they're at because their values that they haven't defined yet aren't really even matching what the company's providing them. But if you have defined your North Star and your direction that you're going with, you're much more likely to put up with the maintenance or the annoyances that your company might have because every company isn't perfect and everyone's different. You may be someone that's perfectly fine just putting in 40 hours a week and living your life outside of work, or you may be more the more ambitious type that wants to work overtime, that wants to put in that extra effort to get that uh, work promotion and perfectly fine. I think what you need to find out is which type are you? And once you define that in these values, then you match it up uh, with the firm, what they're providing you. So how does this work? For each of these values, I just assign a tier system or a out of 10 system. For me, I'm just gonna go a number out of 10 with 10 being uh, the highest, the most valued. Once you have a value number for each of these, you compare it to what your firm, what your company is currently providing. Are they meeting your most valuable needs in what you're looking for in a career? And you should be realistic. It's highly unlikely that a firm is going to be 10 out of 10 on all of these. So let's dig into these a little more. First one is company culture or people. For me, this was a 10 out of 10. This was probably one of the most important aspects of why I joined the company and why I'm still with it. I define this as are the people around me that I work with, that are in charge of the company, are they supportive of me and my career? Are they willing to mentor me? Do they appreciate their employees? Do they take care of them? And essentially, do I trust the leadership? I think this is really important, especially during early on, if you're a younger engineer, particularly the mentorship portion. I've heard good and bad stories about this in the industry. One bad example of company culture is say you have a project manager that isn't really good with people. He gets a new engineer. The engineer's fresh out of school, but the PM expects that person to already know a lot. When in reality, they don't know anything. That's just how it is in the industry. You're gonna learn a lot of this stuff at work. PM gets frustrated, yells at the engineer in front of the whole office and says these words to that fresh engineer that will stay with them for the rest of their life. What do you mean you don't get it? Did you even go to engineering school? That new engineer either quits and hates the structural engineering industry or they'll fight through it and take it and keep getting better and better at their job, maybe leave the firm, go to another more support supportive firm. This is a hypothetical example that I've come up with from talking to a lot of different engineers throughout the industry. But I can assure you that that person, that new engineer will never forget those words. Are you even an engineer? Have you even went to engineering school? You're directly insulting their intelligence at that young age where they're still doubting themselves a lot. So if you absolutely want to destroy newbie engineers, uh, that's the way to do it. A good example was for me, uh, an example in my case. I was about a year or two in my career and two of the principals, the ones that are leading the office, one day told me to, hey, let's, let's go grab you some lunch. And I'm still a newbie and I'm wondering what are these two principals having the time to treat me out to lunch? Like, what did I do? I'm sure they have better things to do. 
they took me to a fancy Italian restaurant. They sat me down and they said they just wanted to treat me out to a nice lunch because they really appreciated what I've been doing, all the great work that I've been doing. And they really want me to, you know, stay with the firm. And if there's anything that they can do to support, to make the office better, just go talk to them. They had an open door policy. And not only that, they gave me a raise right there. And I can tell you as a newbie engineer, I was never going to forget that moment. That mo motivated me even more throughout my career. And even though it was a small gesture on their part, essentially, it meant a lot to me. So company culture can either make or break you, especially if you're a younger engineer. The next one is work hours and flexibility. I define this as how much overtime do you have to do? Is it expected? How flexible is it? Do you have to check in and check out and log in each and every hour and you have to be there at a certain amount of time? Or is it more flexible, maybe work from home or the company trusts you to work their, those 40 hours whenever you get the chance? As a newer graduate, when I was first looking for a job, I didn't really care. I just wanted work experience. So if I needed to work overtime, I'd do it. I'd even volunteer in some cases just because I wanted to learn. So when I was fresh, this was probably like a, a five out of 10 for me in terms of priority. But as you get older now, I put a lot more value into it. Right now, this is probably an eight for me in terms of priority in my career. I think it's fine if you're a new engineer that wants to work overtime, that wants to get paid overtime and your firm uh, wants you to do that as well. Go for it, it's a great learning opportunity, but I do think it's unsustainable for most people. If you work 80 hours a week for three years, you will be burnt out and you will probably end up resenting uh, the industry or your firm because you could have been building your life in those three years, you could have been building your family, you could have been enjoying your hobbies, hanging out with friends or family, but people are different and you should figure out which type are you. The next one is engagement. When I was first starting out, this was a 10 out of 10. That was like the only thing I cared about. I wanted to just learn as much as I could about the structural engineering industry, how to design buildings, how the whole process works. I wanted to work with different types of materials, different types of buildings from low rises to high rises. And fortunately, that's what I got. I was very fortunate to uh, land in a position where I got to work on a, a lot of different projects uh, with something new every single day. And even to this day, I'm still learning something new. And I just love being engaged. I've worked on uh, internships before, jobs before, where I would just wait to leave the office staring at the clock because I was just so bored. And I, I just hated that. I knew when I got it, got my job, I didn't want that. I wanted to be engaged uh, with my work. Nowadays, six plus years later, it's still a important priority for me. I, I'd probably put that as a eight out of 10 in terms of priorities for me. It's, it's gotten lower just because I've been exposed to a lot of things already. If you also value learning new things, or if you just wanna learn something new, I highly encourage you to check out Brilliant, who I'd like to thank for sponsoring this video. Brilliant is an interactive STEM learning platform that helps you learn concepts by visualizing and interacting with them. I'm a big fan of this because I'm a visual hands-on learner and I learn the best by doing. Brilliant has and continues to add more interactivity to their courses, such as their scientific thinking course, where you'll dispense of the number crunching and mathematics in search of something more useful, physical insight. They have a lot of other interactive STEM courses as well, such as computer science and programming, which can be very useful to know in the ever evolving civil engineering industry. If you'd like to try out Brilliant for free and get 20% off a year of STEM learning, Click the link in the description below or visit brilliant.org slash and note that this offer is only available for the first 200 people. The next one is prestige. In civil engineering, I would define this as either working on landmark, uh, huge structures, mega projects, and or working at a very large reputable firm. For me back then and even now, this is probably a five out of 10. Even though it would be cool to work on those types of uh, mega projects and landmark structures, the cons of those, at least for me starting out was, if you're a new engineer, you'll probably get some little tiny small part of that project because you're fresh. And if it's a huge mega project, it may take uh, many years to even get built or just straight out canceled. So for me, this wasn't really that much of a priority even now. I'd rather work on these smaller or medium sized projects that get designed and get built and I can see them being used by the community. But if prestige is really high up in your list, then yeah, check out those uh, larger engineering firms that do work on those types of projects. The next one is 
impact. Back then and even now, that's a 10 out of 10 for me. That's something that I really value. This is the fuel in my tank that keeps me going. And this depends on you and how you view the profession or your career. For me, being in structural engineering and designing buildings so they stand up during earthquakes and getting to see the people use it and those buildings, you know, being a part of the permanent built environment. Uh, knowing that I had an effect on that, that I had an actual impact on the design of that, that's really fulfilling for me. That's what keeps me going. I know there's a lot of things that are sometimes annoying in the industry, just like with uh, any other career. But for me, knowing that I'm making that type of impact with the design I'm doing and the, the project management that I'm helping coordinate to get that building built all the way up to the end of construction, there is nothing like that for me. The next one is career growth. I define this as, does your company have a clear career path for you to go in? Does it have multiple directions? Maybe you wanna be super technical and you wanna get into the technical leads or do you wanna get into management or do you wanna get up into the principal levels, shareholder levels, CEO levels? Are those provided by uh, the firm, the company and are there clear paths to get there? For me personally, starting out, I didn't really care about this too much. This was a five out of 10 and even today, I haven't put too much emphasis or importance on this personally. It's something that I can compromise on. Even though all these things are provided, I don't obsess over it. It's nice to know that it's there. For me, I'm just learning and focusing on learning as much as I can from the industry and just developing my technical and soft skills. And I'm pretty happy with that. I know there are some of you out there that want to strive to get into those really higher up positions. Maybe you wanna be a shareholder at your firm. That's a question that you want to ask yourself if that's one of your main goals. Is there even a possibility or a roadmap for you to get there? Does your firm provide that or is it pretty ambiguous and you might need to look for another firm that can offer you that position in a clearer way? And the last one is pay. How much do you get paid? What is your salary compared to your living cost and lifestyle? Starting out as a fresh graduate, I put this pretty low on my priority list, probably a five out of 10, uh, just because I was just so eager to learn. Uh, that's a mistake a lot of uh, younger engineers do. They tend to undervalue themselves and they wanna prove themselves by working hard, which is great, but as you get further along in, your in, in the industry and learn more about the business aspects of it, you should know your value as a structural engineer and don't be afraid to ask for what you're worth. If you wanna be a complete baller and wanna be making millions of dollars, maybe being an employee isn't for you. Maybe you wanna be a shareholder or maybe you wanna start your own firm. How much money is enough money for you? And ask yourself, why do you wanna make that much amount of money? Sometimes I hear young, younger engineers uh, being disappointed with the base salary of a typical structural engineer, which is understandable. Unfortunately, that's kind of the way the industry is right now as a profession. We need to get better as a whole to value ourselves more in the bigger picture th of things. But yeah, younger engineers might go, I really like structural engineering. I'm really interested into it, but my accounting friend is making $120,000 at Deloitte or some big consulting firm. Then I ask them, why don't you move into those careers? Do you have any interest in those? They go, no, I hate those. I, they just make a lot of money. And then they're not really sure why they wanna make that much. Is it just because your friend is bragging and you feel down? You're comparing yourself to them in another industry, in another city? Cause that comparison loop <laughs> can spiral out of control as you get uh, further in your career. There's always gonna be someone making more money than you. Or do you really need that money to sustain your lifestyle that you want, that life that you want? Do you have a family that you need to support? Do you need uh, Starbucks every day like I do? And if so, that's great. Hopefully the structural engineering industry can provide that for you. If not, that's a decision that you have to make. And maybe with all the other criteria, you can figure out what career is right for you. For me, I put a lot more em emphasis on the work I do, the impact I make, and the people that I work with. And if I do want to make a bunch more money, I know I have options, at least in the structural engineering industry, that I can move to different career paths that I can pursue. So having those backup plans in your career, that's good to take notice of too. What if something else happens that affects all those values? If you wanna learn more about those career paths, I made a career path video that I'll link up here and in the description below as well. And if you made it through 
all the way to the end of this video. Thanks so much. If you want to support the channel for free, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It'll show this video to more civil engineering students and professionals, and hopefully it can help them out as well. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.